Okay. Oh, nice. Let's go. What's going on guys? My name is Aaron and thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. Today I have a special one for you. It's a video I've been trying to make for a little while now. It's a winter bass fishing jerkbait tutorial. Now I'm gonna go over a couple different things in this video. So I'm gonna go over jerkbait tips. I'm gonna go over winter tips in general. And I'm also gonna throw in some bank fishing tips in there. So stay tuned. And before I start the video, go ahead and comment down below. Let me know if you have confidence with the jerkbait or if it's something that you wanna get better with. I know when I first started bass fishing, it took me about three years to get really efficient with the jerk bait. So comment down below, I wanna see where you guys are at. And then after you watch this video and go implement some of these tips, comment down below again and let me know if anything helped. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. All right, so I wanna show you all what I brought along today. So my number one tip for winter bass fishing is comfortability. So these are glacier gloves. I've had these for a couple of years now. These are incredible for keeping your hands warm. If you are not warm when you're fishing, you're not comfortable, you're not gonna fish as well as if you were comfortable. So number one tip is gonna be comfortability. I only brought one box of lures, so I brought my jerkbait box. The most important thing that I have in my jerkbait box is this right here. So soldering wire is extremely important when you fish the jerkbait. The reason why is because you can control the rate of sink. So you'll notice on this one here, this is already pre-wrapped with soldering wire. So I can either make it a slow sink I can make it suspend or I can make it float. To give you guys a good tip, what I recommend is when the water is cold, I recommend a slow sink. When the water is, eh, it's just starting to get cooler, I recommend a suspend. And then when you have an unseasonably warm day, I recommend a, a slow float. So let me kind of go into some different colors and patterns with the jerk bait. So the main things I want you guys to consider when you're throwing a jerk bait is there's three different types of color schemes. You have a clear color scheme, you have a matte color scheme and then you have like a shiny color scheme. So what I recommend is I recommend using the shiny one on your partly cloudy sunny days when you have a lot of wind on the water. Typically the matte one is gonna do really well when you have just overcasty days in general, very cloudy days, maybe not a lot of wind. And your clear one typically does a little bit better on those post frontal days. So the rod I have this on is a 6.8 medium X pride. If you guys watch Tactical Bass and all, you guys will know this rod. It's my absolute favorite rod for jerkbait fishing. And I'm gonna make a video soon on the top four rods you need to have in your arsenal. And this is 100% one of those rods you need to have in your arsenal. On this particular one, I have a regular Vision 110. So I have 12 pound test. I actually fill half my spool with braid and then tie fluorocarbon for the other half. And that way I'm not wasting money. When I cast, there's no braid that comes out. But when I change my line, I only have to change half my spool instead of changing the whole thing. On this one, I actually have eight pound tests tied to a leader. This is my deeper diving jerk bait. So obviously I want this guy to get as deep as possible. This one I typically use for flats, you know, fishing five, six, seven feet. And then this one I'm usually fishing 10 feet or more. So let's get over here in the water and I'm gonna show you guys some tips. All right guys, so the first step I wanna give you is a bank fishing tip in general. When you have a spot you wanna fish, I wanna fish this area right here. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna walk right to the spot where you wanna fish. You wanna stand back a little bit and you wanna cast that spot first. Cause the last thing I wanna do is walk up there and spook all the fish off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cast almost right where I would be standing. Because again, if there's fish there, I don't wanna just walk up right away and spook them. I wanna catch them first. And once we get a little bit more over here, I'm gonna show you guys the cadence and everything. All right guys, so what we kind of have here is we have a flat that drops off into a deep wintering hole. So what I like to do is I like to start off with my shallow diver, cover the edges of the flat and the edges of the bank first, and then we'll switch over to the deep diver after that. All right guys, the first thing with the jerk bait, give it a nice long cast, give it about three reels to get it to where it needs to go. And then I'm gonna use the exact same cadence every time. So it's a three move cadence. It's one, two, reel up a little bit of slack, three. Then typically for the pause, I'm gonna either give it three, five, or 10 second pause. Colder it is outside, the longer I'll go. I have heard of some people letting it sit for about a minute or two. I do not have the patience for that. So usually I'll give it about five to eight second pause is what I like to do in the winter. But again, just that same cadence, one, two, three. One, two, three. A really important tip with the jerkbait guys is you're always hitting the slack in the line. So I'm never moving the lure with the reel. I'm only reeling up the slack 
of the line. That does change when you get into the deeper driver jerk baits, but with these shallow jerk baits, you're always, always, always moving the jerk bait with the slack of the line. The way to tell that you're doing it right, the easiest way that I've seen, is what you wanna do is you wanna point your rod at your line. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a jerking motion with, with my rod, and you see that line jump on the water. So that's a good indication that you've done it right. You're also gonna feel the vibration in the bottom of your rod. So when I hit it, I'm letting it go right back to where it was before. I'm letting it point right back at the line. So I'm gonna hit it, and you'll actually see my, the end of my rod vibrate when I do that. So my grip, I have it on the rod. I don't have a very tight grip on it. Obviously I don't want it to come out of my hand, but I don't have, I'm not gripping it super, super tight. I have a pretty loose grip on it. So when I hit it, it's gonna go right back to the center. So the rod goes right back to center. And you guys see how the end of the rod is vibrating. When you get that vibration on the end of the rod, you know you've got a good strike on the jerk bait. So again, let's cast it out there. And what I'm doing with this area right now is I'm just fan casting. So, you know, I started casting down this drop off, casting more in the middle now, cast on that side, and I'll work this place fan casting, and then I'll either change up my color or I'll change up how deep it dies depending on if I'm getting bit or not. So I'm gonna show you guys the exact procedure. So slack line, one, two, about one reel, three. One reel for the slack, one, two, three. One reel for the slack, one, two, three. Really simplify it. One reel, one, two, three. And that's really it. It does take a while to get the confidence with the jerk bait. Again, that was probably one of the last techniques that I really got good at was the jerk bait. But once you do, it completely changes your winter bass fishing experience. Another thing you can really manipulate with the jerk bait is you can manipulate how hard you're striking it. So obviously you can strike it really hard, but notice how that rod returns to center each time. And I'm doing the same technique with my reel, right? So you can strike it really hard or you can strike it nice and soft. Got one, got one. Decent one, decent one. Uh, there we go. All right, come on, buddy. Oh, <laughs> let's go. Let's go, baby. Power of the jerk bait. Power of the jerk bait. Something I forgot to mention that you always want to bring when you're jerk bait fishing is a pair of pliers. Last thing you want to do is have a fish take it down its gullet and you don't have a pair of pliers to get it out. Look at that one, guys. Nice little chunk. Probably about two and three quarters. Maybe even pushing three, honestly. It's a pretty good one for this lake. I would say two and three quarters. Nice fish. Let's get her back in. All right, so that's a great example. Right there. It's a pretty big fish for this lake too. So there we go right there, guys. Perfect example of the power of a jerk bait. The only thing I'm confused about is I was showing you guys the aggressive twitch and I was showing you the soft twitch. So I'm really not sure which one worked better. The soft twitch triggered the fish but was it following because of the aggressive twitch? I guess we're gonna have to find that out. And like I was telling you guys at the start of the video, so important to be comfortable. You know, these gloves, my hands are extremely warm. My body's warm. I have nice hunting bibs with wool leggings on underneath them. I also have a snowboarding jacket on, so I'm extremely comfortable. And that is very, 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 very important while you're winter fishing. The whole time we're watching our line because a lot of this time with the jerk bait you're fishing on slack lines so you're not going to feel the bite but you're going to see the bite with the line i was really confused what's going on my guides are freezing up <laughs> i was so confused And then once you guys get comfortable enough with the jerk bait, you'll actually be able to hit it backhanded. And that's gonna really help when you need to get into different places. 
right, guys, we're gonna get this one more cast. I think I'm gonna switch over to the deeper diving jerk bait. I'm pretty surprised we haven't gotten any more bites except that one so far. Even though it's only been about 30 minutes, you know, typically the bite's pretty good here. So, give this one more cast and then switch over to the deeper diving jerk bait, see if they want that a little bit more. It's very cold outside, so a lot of times they're gonna sit a little bit lower when it's cold like this. On those sunny, warm days, especially abnormally warm days for the winter, they're gonna pull up in the shallows. But on days like today, the surface water is gonna be a lot cooler than the water down below, so they're gonna sit in a warmer place. All right, so Vision 110 plus one. This is the gill color, I believe. Funny thing about that white jerk bait is there's actually no shad at all in this lake, but they tend to eat the white jerk bait anywhere I go, honestly. I, I really, really like a white jerk bait in terms of color. Clear, you can't get wrong in clear water. And then with the gill, you know, a lot of places have bluegill in it. So it looks like a little tiny unhealthy bluegill. A lot of times I really like that. It looks like an easy meal in the winter. Same exact cadence. So jerk, jerk, pause, jerk. Jerk, jerk, pause, jerk. And with the deeper ones, the bigger bill you have, the less hard you want to hit it. So this one, I don't want to cram on it. You know, I don't, I don't want to hit it extremely hard because it's going to have a really funky action underwater. It's not going to work well. With this one, I want to hit it pretty lightly. Just giving it a nice eight second pause there. And again, you'll feel that vibration in your hand. You'll feel that rod vibrate. That's how you know you got a good strike. I'm really surprised to be honest with you guys. You know, these overcasty, windy days are typically perfect for the jerkbait bite. So, not sure what's going on with it. Not sure if they're not in this area. Not sure if they're not feeding yet, but. We got a couple hours to fish it, so we're gonna switch up a couple lures. I only brought the jerkbait lures today. A lot of times I do like to pair the jerkbait with a drop shot. And the reason being is because you can be fishing one day, wind can be blowing five to 10 miles an hour, nice rip on the water and they're biting the jerkbait. But as soon as that wind dies, your jerkbait bite will die. And that's when I'll switch over to the drop shot. So a lot of times for me, it's a one-two punch in the winter, jerkbait, drop shot. Here we go. Teeny, teeny, tiny guy. The only reason I knew he was on there is because I was watching that line. All right, fish number two. We're shrinking. Now I was letting that bait sit for a pretty long time. So it might be one of those 10 second days. Just like Roland Martin says, guys, you gotta be a line watcher with basically every technique instead of maybe like a moving bait technique or you know top water because obviously you're gonna see that you gotta watch that line you gotta watch the line you gotta watch the line i know a lot of times we get distracted we're looking all over the place we're looking at our phones i tend to do the exact same thing but if you want to be the most successful fisherman you can be you have to watch the line you're going to miss a bunch of your bites if you don't realize that the fish is on there And another really important thing you guys are going to see me do is constantly cover different angles. Fishing is a game about angles, believe it or not. Bass are ambush predators, so a lot of times they like to ambush from specific ways. So if you're just fishing one way, a lot of times you're going to run it by a fish, but not the exact way they want to see the bait come before they're willing to ambush it. So I'm fishing the same spot, but I'm going to constantly move. I'm going to constantly try different angles. I'm going to constantly try a different approach to see if maybe one angle works better than the other. And then if I get a cast where I get a fish, I'm gonna repeat that angle over and over again. So one so far on the deep diver and one on the shallow. Okay, another small one. It's good though. we go guys number three again guys do not forget your pliers when you're fishing treble hook baits extremely important number three and one thing i want to show you guys on this bait here so 
I actually have upgraded these hooks. The regular Vision 110 comes with EWG hooks and they're really poor quality, honestly, in my opinion, they tend to bend out very easily. I've upgraded these hooks to Aaron Martin size six nano finesse trebles. Now I've actually been on Tackle Warehouse's site a couple times and they haven't had those in stock. So I don't know if they don't carry them anymore or uh, I might have to find a different brand, but I really, really like the round bun hooks size six if you're gonna upgrade the, the equipment, which I highly recommend it because the last thing you wanna do is hook a six, seven, eight pounder and have one of those hooks bend out. All right, so we've gotten to pretty quick on the deep dive and jerk bait, letting us in for about eight seconds. So that's a good sign. And the last two fish, been watching the line. Haven't fight, felt the bite at all. It's been all from watching that line. I'm gonna find the angle they're more likely to bite at, continue to cast in that angle. I don't recommend falling in as part of your strategy. So now we've kind of lost our wind, a lot more calm on the water. This is typically when I would switch over to the drop shot, see if the drop shot can get it done. But we are just strictly focusing on the jerk baits today. I wanted to be able to give you guys the best possible tutorial I could. So I decided not to take any other rods. You can throw jerk baits on a spinning rod. So like if you guys only have one medium bait casting rod, put one on a spinning rod and put one on a casting rod. The deeper diving one I typically would recommend on the spinning rod because that's gonna help you get it down a little bit deeper. You can cast further, which also means you can get it down deeper. So I recommend that. I was gonna bring a spinning rod to show you guys, but I was gonna be too tempted to use a drop shot if I did, so I decided against it. All right, so right now, we've got three so far. Two on the deeper diver, one on the more shallow one. I'm gonna throw this particular one for a little bit longer, but then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to a different deeper diver color. See if we can get another strike on that. And then if we can't get anything on that, I'm gonna switch over to the Vision 110 Plus 2. That's a little bit different technique, so I'm gonna show you guys that if we can't get bit on this here in the next 20 or 30 minutes. The key to bass fishing is knowing when and when not to switch up your lure. Like I could have been throwing the shallow diving one all morning, only gotten that one fish, which was a great fish. But if I wouldn't have switched up to the deeper diver, I might not have caught the other two. Again, you guys will see that consistent technique throughout the video. Jerk, jerk, jerk. Jerk, jerk, jerk. Remember, we're striking it. Letting that rod go right back to point towards the bait. Every single time. Consistent. Not holding too firm of a grip on it. You'll feel that rod vibrate. You'll see the vibration. That's how you know you're doing it right. Always striking the slack line. Never moving the bait with the reel. Always with the tip of the rod. Always on slack line. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now what was going on there for a second? Number four. Another little cookie cutter. This lake is full of them. So again, we stuck with the deeper diver for a little bit longer. Same color. We had two bites on it. Thought pretty heavily about switching it up. But as of right now, you know, I'm gonna throw this for, for like I said, 20, 30 minutes more. We've gotten bit already two times, three times now in this color. So for me, there's not a point to switch it up until I feel like we've gone a long enough lull Maybe those fish don't want that color anymore. Maybe the, all the fish who have bitten that color are gonna bite it already. So I'll keep throwing it until you have about 30 minutes without a bite, and then I'll switch over to something different. That wind's picking back up. Let's see if that makes a difference. In the type of area I recommend you guys fish in the winter, if you can find a bank with a steep drop off, especially near a flat, that's really what I recommend. So if you guys are fishing your, your local lakes and you can find that bank that's got that steep drop off, fishing that jerk bait along the steep drop off is, is where you need to be. Typically when bass winter, they like to go in the deeper holes. This lake in particular is a pretty shallow lake, but we have a really deep hole here. So that's exactly what I'm fishing. All right, one more cast with this and we're gonna change up to some different colors. 
probably gonna pick back up the shallow diver white just for a few casts, see if we can get anything on that. And if we can't, we're actually gonna put on the plus two. I'm gonna show you guys how to fish that. All right. Let's pick back up the white for a few casts. If we can't pick up a bite on that, we'll switch to some different colors. These are those uh, standard Vision 110 hooks. I forgot to change these out. So those are those EWG, and they just are not very good quality, honestly. I do recommend switching them out. Like I told you guys before, the last thing you want to do is hook a giant fish, hook your PV, and you don't land it because the hooks bend out. Obviously, you want to have your drag set right. If you have your drag set right, it shouldn't bend them out. But low-quality terminal tackle is never a good thing. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Hiding right on the bank. Hiding right on the bank. And that is exactly why you want to have that shallow and deep combination because when you have that, it makes things so much easier. One's a little bit bigger than the last couple, but obviously not as big as the first one. But I'm using that shallow diver to cover the bank areas, to cover the flats, deep diver to cover the middle. So we've got all sections of the water column covered. A lot of times I like to look at that jerk bait and see what it's doing. So in this one, we have a basically perfect suspension and maybe a slight sink. So for this weather, that's exactly what I want. Especially this being my shallow diver. Your shallow diver, a lot of times you don't want that to sink. Cause if I'm fishing a five foot flat, and this thing's diving three feet. I don't want it to sink down there to five feet. I almost want like a slow float, slow float with my shallow diver. The deep diver is the exact opposite. So with the deep diver, I'm trying to get it as deep as possible. With that, I typically like a slow sink. All right, time to change up the colors a little bit. All right, so switching it up from the Mega Bass, we're actually going to hit this Rapala here. My preferred jerk bait is, of course, the Vision 110, the 110 Plus 1, the 110 Plus 2. But those are about $20 a piece. This Rapala, you can go to Walmart, and I think they're about, you know, $12 to $15. So they're not cheap by any means, but if you can buy two of these for the price of one of the Mega Bass, I do recommend getting a couple different colors in your arsenal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a little bit better one. That's a little bit better one. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Get in here, bud. <laughs> Let's go. Nice little pound and a halfer. We'll take that. So switch over to that different color. Switch over to that blue. Got bit right off the bat. And that is exactly why you experiment. So you know, I'm catching them on the white, catch them on the bluegill, but once that bite tends to die down, you wanna switch it up. Nice healthy fish, about a pound and a half. Pretty good for this lake, to be honest with you. See ya, bud. All right, guys, so that feels really good. A bait change directly into a bite could be nothing but that is exactly what you want exactly what you want guys fishing is a game of micro experiments as soon as you micro experiment and something works that's telling you something now again we don't know if that was just a one-off or if we're gonna catch more but that gives me a lot of confidence and confidence is key when it comes to catching bass How's it going, man? Good morning. Morning, how are you? Good. Put a video on. Yes, sir, yeah. Do you drop fish anywhere else or just here? Yeah. Here? So are you, are you fishing today then? How many? You fishing today? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. It's a beautiful day for it. Yeah. Hopefully you catch some. Huh? You know what you fish? No, I just throw them back. Come back? Yeah, I just throw them back. 
the bass. Oh. Do you eat, do you eat bass? Yeah, I eat, I eat bass. Okay. But a small one, small one I put back. A small ones you put back. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah I got a fight. Oh gosh. You're good. Like this? Yeah, I've gotten probably six. Yeah. Couple couple bigger bass, like two pounds, two and a half pounds. Couple of decent ones. Yeah, I just threw them back, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll, I eat trout, but not really the bass. A bass? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I call it bass, but I, I eat trout. Oh, you eat trout? Yeah, but not bass, usually. Oh, I don't like the trout. You don't like trout? Oh, really? Okay. You, you go and get me. Okay, will do, yeah. <laughs> Good luck, let me know if you catch anything. My wind has died for the moment. Which again, if I had my drop shot rod with me, this will be the time when I would break out the drop shot rod. When that wind's going, keep the jerk bait in your hand. Once you get those slick calm conditions, pull out your finesse bait. And this jerk bait's got a longer bill, so again, we're giving it those lighter hits. So that's one thing you guys always wanna do when you're jerk bait fishing, is you wanna make sure that you're checking your rate of sink or your rate of float on your jerk bait. Because obviously we can switch up colors and catch more fish, but the question is, what was our jerkbait doing underwater? Do they like it sinking? Do they like it floating? Like I said earlier in the video, what I found is the colder it is, the more they like it to sink. If you get some abnormally warm days, typically they like to float in, in my opinion, but that's not a law. That's just a rule overall that I like to go by, so. Couple more casts with this and we're gonna try that plus one. Our wind has died, so our bite is not very good right now. Again, this would be one of those times where I typically break out a drop shot, start fishing the drop shot in the same spots I'm fishing the jerk bait. Cause if there's no wind, they're a lot less likely to ambush the jerk bait. The good news is we still do have our cloud cover. So that could be enough to eke out a few more bites. And one thing I've noticed guys, is basically all my bites have come on the right hand side over here. So I'm better off doing a lot more casts the right hand side. I've literally gotten zero fish over here on the left hand side, zero. So I need to focus my fan casting in this area to the right over here, because it's been a lot more productive than the area on the left. All right, I wanna switch it over to the 110 plus two. Now there's two different ways to fish this bait. So obviously we have our traditional way. It's a very long bill, so we don't wanna have hard strokes at all. We wanna have soft stroke, so. Obviously we have the normal way, still using the exact same cadence. So one, two, three. Reel up a little bit of slack. One, two, three. Reel up a little bit of slack. One, two, three. It's freezing up my guides, it's driving me crazy. One, two, three. And let me show you guys the other way to fish this bait. Cast it out there. Get it down to depth, and all you need to do is a slow pull. Slow pull. Let it set for about five to eight seconds. Slow pull. So funny, because it feels like fishing like this, feels like fishing a jig. There we go, come on wind, bring it on. Cast this guy around a couple more times. It's like you guys saw, I switched the color, got bit right off the bat, and then nothing after that. So that's why you wanna change things up and experiment. Caught that decent fish, but now we're not getting anything. So here in a few casts, we're gonna change it up again. And keep doing the exact same thing. Once you find something that's hot, and if it works over and over and over again, fantastic. But until you find that bait, keep making little adjustments. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if I can pick up another one on the shiny one. I like this color a lot because you do have that shine, that shimmy on it, but you also have clear as well too, so. 
Plus you got the natural purples. I think it looks really good. Really good looking color. Same cadence, you guys will notice nothing's changed. One, two, three. Three to 10 seconds, anywhere in there. One, two, three. One, two, three. Got one. There we go. You want this one or no? No, okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Switch it up and got another little one. Don't know if that's six or seven. I'm not really sure, but again, bait switch up. Different color. Tried the shiny finish after we tried the matte. We've tried the clear. Working a little bit more aggressively. See if we can't pick up one or two more. And as you guys see, like I've said, fishing is a game of micro experiments. We switched up our bait five or six times. We've caught fish on at least four different colors of jerk baits right now. At least four different colors we've caught fish on. So you guys can see, try something to see if it's working. If it doesn't work, you can always switch it up. How's it going? Good, how are you? Uh, about six or seven bass. Yeah. Are you going for carp or what are you going for? Okay. All right, guys, last cast, and we are going to get out of here. Let's see if we can end on a high note here. Oh, nice. Let's go. Go, baby. There we go. Not bad. Not huge, but yeah. There we go. There we go. Better one. Did you want him? Okay, thank you. All right, guys, so last cast, we switched over to a different color. Got another solid two pounder. And what's your name? What's your name? Michael. Michael? Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and give this to Michael. Michael will fish this for food. Oh, okay. So we're gonna Thank go ahead and know. give that over to Michael. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Yes, sir, not a problem. So guys, I don't personally eat bass myself, but you know, some people are out here fishing for food. Some people might not make a lot of money. So as much as I disagree with eating bass myself, if that's how he provides for his family, I'm totally okay with it. Now, I know I said last cast, but, I mean, how can I end on that note, really? Let's fling it out here a couple more times. See if we can pick another one up. All right, guys, that is gonna conclude the fishing for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the end. I really appreciate it. Those that are still here, you guys are the true heroes of this channel. Hopefully you guys got some good tips and tricks for winter jerkbait fishing. It's one of the most difficult techniques to master, but once you do get it down, it's one of the most rewarding techniques, especially in the winter. If you guys enjoyed the content, please subscribe, like, comment, share. All that is greatly appreciated. Stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one.